I think for the greater good of the nation that we should complete the project. That's Verify viewer Sherman Powers. He supports President Trump and his plans to finish the border wall with Mexico. In part one of this story, I took Sherman to the Rio Grande Valley. Now he'll decide what's more important, the wall or the rights of landowners with property in the way. My name is David Schechter. I'm a veteran reporter, and now I work for you. I'm taking real people out on the road to get their questions answered, and you're coming along for the ride. This is Verify Road Trip. In Los Abanos, Texas, is the only hand-drawn ferry across the Rio Grande. This is quite unique. Sherman and I are hitching a ride. It takes cars two at a time back and forth between Mexico. And there is a U.S. Customs Station on our side. Sherman's worried it's too easy to sneak around it. If you swim around the the, the area of that of that river where we can't see, yeah, you know, wouldn't it, be hard to cross. There. It wouldn't be hard to cross. This is the historic town of Roma, Texas, and it sits on a bluff looking over the Rio Grande. That's Mexico right over there. We're seeing that the town sits so close to the water and plans for the wall would carve up city blocks. It's been in my wife's family for eight generations. Just down the road is Noel Benavides. A wall would cut through his property too, and he sees people crossing. There are trails back here and clothing left behind. But illegals, when they come through, Noel supports a strong border, but he thinks that can be accomplished with more agents and more technology, not a wall. I, mean, I spend $20 billion on something that's not gonna be effective. So you're saying maybe a wall, but after everything else has been tried? No, I never said maybe. And the, and the, you said may, never said maybe? Never said maybe. Okay. What's gonna happen with the wall? We don't know. If you're just you know, waiting for the price to go up on your land or if you're uh, doing something on your the own. The price is besides the point, it's, it's, it's the, uh, what they're trying to do. It's just beautiful. And to come in and destroy that, there's no, no monetary value for that. I understand. When government wants property but the owner doesn't want to sell, they have to use a law called eminent domain. And here's how it works. In court, the government claims why it needs the land. It writes a check to the court for what it believes the property is worth. It's then up to the landowner to challenge the government's offer. All right, you wanna grab a seat? Yeah, yeah. Have a chat? Yeah, sure. We met for coffee with Efren Oliveras, a civil rights attorney. He says poor landowners who can't afford a lawyer get railroaded by the government. He saw it happen in 2008 during the first phase of wall construction. We had a client, 1.3 acres, Initial offer, $100. Oh, oh my, that's weird. We challenged Robert. that, and the case ended up settling for 56000 Oh, my gosh. In 08, the government filed around 330, 334 cases. There's about 70 still pending. Nine wow. years later. Still in court. Uh, coming up on 10 years, still in court. I can assume it's pretty rare that somebody walks away from that whole process and says, I'm happy with the decision. Boy, that was great. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Justin, <laughs> I haven't met a single person who feels that way. <laughs> we want to know how effective is the wall we already have. Customs and Border Patrol declined to speak to Sherman because he's not with the media. So instead, we sent Sebastian from our crew on a ride along. Within 10 minutes of riding, we hear a call on the radio and it says, they're moving packages, they're moving packages. 10 4, 10 4, 9, 10. But as soon as they said packages, they went, Oop. and I went. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here you go, Sebastian. And he opens the door and starts running. So I opened the door and I started <laughs> running after him. And like out of a movie, there is three, four Border Patrol officers, conveyor belt style, throwing back to each other packages of like brown packing tape wrapping them. How many packages are you talking about? Ready for this? Ready for this? More than 900 pounds of marijuana. What a haul. Um, did the Border Patrol at any time mention how the, how the border wall has helped them in their job? Uh, Deputy Rodriguez was um, very clear that he didn't want to talk about policy or politics, but he could talk about what he'd seen. So what this wall has done, it's uh, stopped their 
their movements. So now they have to scale the wall, which buys the agents time to actually come down and apprehend them. You know, anywhere from 30 up to 50 illegal aliens trying to get past these points at, at one time. Now the average group size, I'd say, maybe is about 15, anywhere from 10 to 15 in this area. So it's cut in half at least. So he said that in his experience, having a physical barrier there is giving them more time to catch the people that are trying to climb it or get around it. Sherman and I wanted to hear from someone who has wall on their property, so we met with this rancher. But he's concerned about the violence of drug cartels in Mexico and asked not to be identified. 2008, you know, was our worst year. They cut our fences, then our cattle's out. At this area right here, you could see 50 people at a time crossing. After the wall went up, he says most of that activity stopped. And people talk about the wall don't work. They don't know anything about whether the wall works or not, but I'll tell you it works. In the instance of, of a wall across the entire southern border for national security, is that more important than uh, landowners' rights? I guess in my case, I like the wall because mm -hmm. it's given us security. Yes, sir. And uh, I, I definitely think they need the wall in other places. But it hasn't been easy for him either. The rancher had to sue the government because it never paid him for the use of his property. And I don't mind, you know, losing the value, but I don't think I should have to pay for the rest of the people in the United States for their security. I think everybody needs to pay us for what we furnish the government. At the beginning you said, hey, um, we need to finish this job. The government decides to build, you're going to go for the government or are you going to go for the, for the landowner? I have to go for the government because the landowners are going to probably say no because they have a, a personal stake and in the land. And you would probably too. Are I you? would. I absolutely would. Um, and for this wall to come in, it's going to hurt a lot of people and the environment in a lot of different ways. But I have to, I have to just you know, go with my heart there and say that that overall, for the safety of the United States, that, um, that the wall's a good idea. But don't take my word for it, take his. <laughs>